Hello, this is Unsung with Gimleap, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the new items introduced in League of Legends Season 14. Be warned, this is just the first iteration of the new items. There are a lot of items that are going to be changed as they are quite tentative. As always, the PBE isn't a good indicator of how strong an item is going to be. It requires players to actually get behind them and test just how overpowered that they are. A great example of this concept is present in the item Hollow Radiance. Make sure that you stay tuned until we talk about it in the video because this item is completely broken and there is no way that it is making it to life. This video is going to be broken into sections. First, we're going to be covering the mage itemization as they had the most broad changes. Then we're going to move on to tanks and so on and so forth. As far as mage itemization goes, there are four early game choices that you're going to have to make in essentially every single game if you're playing a champion with mana. Malignance is going to be our first choice here. Riot wants to reduce the amount of stats that are present on a lot of the AP items, so only a couple of items have the combination of Ability Haste, Mana, and AP. The primary reason to build this, however, is going to be the unique passives present. Ultimate Power, our first passive, is going to give you Ability Haste only for your ultimate. This by itself is nice on champions such as Ari and Syndra, who are pretty alt-reliant. However, it's taken to the next level by the second passive, Ultimate Flames. Whenever you damage an enemy champion, your ultimate will burn the ground beneath them for 3 seconds, healing magic damage every second and also reducing their magic resist by a flat amount as long as they're on the burning ground. Malignance is going to be a way to augment your champion's playstyle if it is alt-reliant. You'll have more access to your ultimate, this really high damaging unique AoE, as well as magic pen built into the item, there's basically nothing else that you could want here. Of course, some other mages prefer upfront damage that is not tied to their ultimate, and that's where our next item, Caster's Companion, comes in. This item has a very similar build path to Malignance, but the unique passive is quite different. Load, our first passive, allows you to gain a shot every 3 seconds up to a maximum of 6. Fire, our second passive, allows your damaging abilities to consume all shot charges to deal additional magic damage to the target and one additional nearby target per charge. If there are not enough targets nearby, then all of that damage is redirected into a single target. This is now going to be your upfront burst damage itemization option. Archangel Staff has had the build path and the stats updated, but it's pretty similar to what it is on live, and Rod of Ages is also pretty similar to what it is on live. Now that we covered these starting items, let's go ahead and talk about the new penetration items. Storm Surge is going to be our first penetration item, and oh my goodness is this item amazing. Storm Surge grants you ability power, magic penetration, and movement speed as its three primary stats. Our first passive here, Storm Raider, grants us 25% bonus movement speed for 2 seconds after we deal 35% of a target's maximum health as damage. This will also mark our opponent with Storm Surge. Storm Surge causes a lightning strike to form after 2 seconds, striking a massive area around the target for bonus magic damage. Storm Surge is a great utility and burst option combined into one. However, because it doesn't give you mana, it's not going to be a great option for a lot of champions until later into the game, unless we're a manaless champion of course. Crypt Bloom is a completely new penetration item that has a more utility focus. This item grants you ability power, ability haste, 30% magic penetration, which is less than void staff, and then a passive effect as well. The passive here, Life from Death, causes a healing nova to be created from an enemy champion within 3 seconds of you damaging them. This nova then heals all of your allies for a percentage of your AP as well as a very small flat value and is then placed on a 60 second cooldown. This is of course going to be a very strong burst healing option that will keep both you and your allies topped up. Great item for AP assassins and those mages that want to make risky picks. Void Staff is still going to remain in the game, Crypt Bloom is going to be the utility option and Void Staff is going to be the raw damage option. Our next penetration item is going to be Shadow Flame. Shadow Flame has received a complete rework. Now it no longer deals damage amp with shields, instead it critically strikes your opponents underneath a certain AP threshold. It also amplifies all true damage cast onto them, so if you ignite your opponent, get them below the threshold, then the true damage from the ignite will critically strike, and because it's damage over time, it will also increase the effectiveness of this crit by 10% more. A great item for any damage over time or burst mage. Rocket Belt is still in the game, but it has been transformed into an early power spike item. This item gives reduced AP, 300 health, 15 ability haste, and then the same rocket active that it granted before. This sums up pen, let's go ahead and talk about defensive items. There is a theme to all the new defensive items. They're significantly more expensive, but they also grant more stats. Banshee's Veil, for example, now grants you 120 AP, 50 MR, and then the previous Veil passive that it gave you before. There is no more ability haste present on this item. Zanya's Hourglass grants you 120 AP, 50 armor, and then a new active, Time Stop, which allows you to enter stasis much like before. Those are going to be our two big defensive items, let's go ahead and talk situational now. Leandris has been reworked to a previous version that deals increased damage based on your time in combat. It still does do the max health damage to tanks, 
but this is significantly less than what it was dealing before. There is also no pen or mana present on this item, so it's more of a situational pick. Riftmaker has been slightly reworked. It now grants you 70 AP, ability haste, as well as health. The Void and Fusion passive, which gives you bonus health as AP, is still on the item. However, the Omni Vamp has been updated to an even stronger state. Now, area of effect damage will heal you fully. The same is being done with pets as well. So if you're playing Ivern with Riftmaker, this will heal you for all the damage that Daisy does. Cosmic Drive is mostly the same, but the stacking mechanic has been removed, and instead you just get granted bonus movement speed whenever you damage an enemy champion. Morello is now extremely cheap, with decent stats on it, Megis has been changed, it's been made more expensive, Nasher's Tooth is buffed slightly, Lich Bane is also buffed slightly, and Horizon Focus has been reworked. Hypershot, the old passive on Horizon, is still present, but it's been shifted up a little bit. When you deal damage with abilities to champions at 700 range or greater, reveal them for 6 seconds and then deal 10% increased damage to enemies that are revealed by Hypershot. Focus, our second passive here, reveals all other enemy champions within 1200 range of the target that's marked with Hypershot for 2 seconds. This is placed on a 30 second cooldown afterwards. That about sums up all the mage itemization changes. Of course, a lot of these are going to be subject to change as this is the earliest iteration that they have on the PBE. If you want a head start on this season before it hits live, make sure that you go to GameLeap.com where we have hundreds of courses for you to learn any champion that you want to learn before the season actually drops. Let's go ahead and move on to tank itemization. There are four new tank items that are incredibly, incredibly strong. Unending Despair is going to be our first new item here. Jack Show's passives have been broken up and redistributed to other items. This is one of the items that received a piece of that. This item grants you 400 health, 55 armor, 10 ability haste, and then passively, while you're in combat with champions, every seven seconds you deal magic damage to all nearby champions, healing for 175% of the damage dealt. This is a disgustingly strong extended fight item, especially on champions such as Orn and Cassante, which want to be deep on most enemy teams. Koenig Rookern is our next new item here. This item grants you 350 health, 80 magic resist, and also a new passive. Mage Bane. After not taking damage from champions for 15 seconds, gain a magic shield for 18% of your maximum health. This is Galio's W passive placed on an item, one of the strongest magic resist items that has ever been introduced to League of Legends. Speaking of disgusting magic resist items, Hollow Radiance is the next item introduced. This item grants you health, magic resist, and also two passives. Immolate is our first passive here. Taking or dealing damage causes you to begin dealing damage per second to all nearby enemies increased against minions for three seconds. Taking or dealing damage refreshes the duration of this effect as well. Moonburn is going to be our second and completely busted passive. Killing an enemy deals magic damage in an area around them. This effect is not on a cooldown, so we can jump into the middle of a minion wave, one-shot it using one of our abilities, and immediately burst our opponent as long as there is a bunch of minions nearby them that blew up. This item is crazy strong and probably one of the ones that won't make it off the PBE in its current state. Trailblazer is a new tank support item, but there will be some tanks that will opt into this item over Deadman's Plate. Deadman's Plate has been primarily changed to be a bruiser item, whereas Trailblazer is still going to be our dedicated tank version of this. We get 250 health, 40 armor, and move speed, with a new passive lead the way. While moving, we gain 20 bonus movement speed, and then at max speed, we create a trail that speeds up all allied champions' move speed by 15% of yours. Your next attack then discharges this movement speed, and melee champions slow the target by 50% for one second. This is like a team-oriented version of the first iteration of Deadman's Plate. The Deadman's Plate rework gives us item 300 health, 45 armor, as well as 5% movement speed. The passive, Shipwrecker, gives you 40% bonus movement speed that's built up while moving. Once fully built, your next attack discharges the built-up movement speed to deal 40 plus 100% of your base AD as bonus physical damage. Our new passive here, Unsinkable, reduces the strength of movement slowing effects by 25%. This is like swiftness boots with tank stats on them. That covers all the new tank items, let's go ahead and talk about the reworked ones a little bit more. Jack Show has been reworked to be more of a capstone tank item. This gives you a huge amount of tank stats once we have the Boardborn Resilience fully stacked. Force of Nature has been rebuffed to its previous state, becoming one of the best magic damage DPS counter items in the entire game. Heart Steel is still in the game, Iceborne has been nerfed, Frozen Heart has been nerfed, Sunfire has been adjusted, and so has Warmog's armor. Now Warmog's grants you less health, 5% bonus movement speed, and then still the same Warmog's heart passive that it granted you before. The next most changed category of items have been the Assassin items. Both Duskblade and Prowlers have been removed here, and they've been replaced with some other items. Brutalizer is back as an early game spike item, Serrated Dirk is still present in the game, the stat line on these is a little bit different, so they do separate things. Opportunity is our first new Assassin item. This item grants you AD, lethality, and move speed, as well as a new passive. Murder. After being out of combat, gain bonus lethality that then lasts for 
3 seconds after dealing damage to champions. Murder Speed is our next passive. If a champion dies within 3 seconds of us damaging them, gain 150% decaying movement speed for 1.5 seconds. Zoomies is like old Yomu's Ghost Blade on steroids. This is a really strong item that has a decent stat line if you prefer a more hit and run playstyle. Hubris is our next new item. This item grants you 60 attack damage, 18 lethality, as well as 15 ability haste. Our first passive here, Ego, creates a statue of you in your own fountain whenever you kill an enemy. Our second passive, Eminence, gives you bonus attack damage when a champion that you have damaged within the last 3 seconds dies. This item has a really cool concept and it's pretty cool seeing your own statues in the fountain. Next up we have Voltaic Cyclosword. This item is a reskin of Old Prowler's Claw or one of the previous versions of Duskblade. There's not really anything new and interesting here. There is a new passive on it called Energize which grants you stacks whenever you move, attack, or stealth. Firmament is the second component of the Energize passive here. Your Energize attacks apply 100 bonus physical damage and then slow enemies for 99% for 0.75 seconds. The slow is also melee only. Profane Hydra is going to be our last new assassin item. There is three different Hydras now. Ravenous, Profane, and Titanic. Profane Hydra grants you attack damage, lethality, and ability haste. We're given a new active here, Heretical Slash, which deals 65% of our total attack damage to nearby enemies, which is increased to 97.5% if the target is below 30% of their health. It's like an auto attack, but with extra steps. Our other passive here, Cleave, causes our attacks to deal bonus damage to other units within range of the primary target hit. Literally just a lethality version of Ravenous Hydra. Serelda's Grudge has been completely reworked to be an armor pin item that scales off the total lethality that we have. It grants 45 damage, 15 lethality, and 15 ability haste. Our passive Rancor gives you armor penetration based off your total lethality as well as a flat value. Bitter Cold, our second passive, is the old Serelda's passive, but it only activates when the enemy is below 50% health. Yomus has also been reverted to its previous iteration before it was a mythic. Eclipse is still present in the game, but the Ever Rising Moon passive has been nerfed significantly, and it also doesn't grant you percentage pen anymore. Instead, it's just AD and ability haste. Now that we talked about the assassin items, let's go ahead and cover fighter items. Sundered Sky is a brand new item introduced into the game that has an interesting passive as well as an interesting stat line. It gives you 55 damage, 15 ability haste, and 300 HP. What makes this item so interesting is the passive, Light Shield Strike. The first First attack against the champion will critically strike for 150% damage and then also heals you for 110% of your base AD plus 8% of your missing health. This item is like a balanced version of Divine Sunder. Burst damage and burst heal oriented, but way stronger on champions like Riven, Rengar, and Camille who are going to be hitting multiple targets and that can benefit from the stat line. Both Ravenous Hydra and Titanic Hydra have regained their actives, making them really cool to use once again. Holebreaker, one of the worst items ever added to the game, has been significantly reworked. It now grants you more AD, less health, bonus movement speed, and no bonus resistances. Our first passive here, Skipper, causes your basic attacks to grant you a stack up to a maximum of 5 stacks. Attacking an enemy champion or epic monster while at max stacks consumes all stacks to deal 150% of your base AD as bonus physical damage, increased to 400% against structures. Our second passive here, Border party causes nearby allied siege and super minions to gain 15 to 90 bonus armor and magic resist based on level, no longer for the enemy champion. So we don't have to worry about hunting alone anymore, nor this item being completely imbalanced and destroying the game by itself. Hopefully we can kill these split pushing Garens and Yones because man is it tiring with the current iteration of Hullbreaker in the game. Speaking of Garen, Stridebreaker, his most built item, has received a change to the active. Now, using it won't stop our movement, and we gain bonus movement speed based on the total amount of champions that we slow. Spear of Shojin has been reworked to be more of a damage item. This is not going to be a super spammy item in like its current iteration, but instead reward you for staying in combat. Blade of the Rune King has also been slightly reworked. They've split the passive into two parts. We still deal current health on hit, but our new passive, Clawwind Shadows, grants our first basic attack a 30% slow. That covers all the fighter items. Let's go ahead and talk about the marksman items. A new marksman item has hit the rift, and that is going to be Experimental Hexplate. This item gives you AD, attack speed, and also health. Our unique passive here gains us 30 ultimate ability haste. Our second passive here, however, is what makes it so strong. After casting your ultimate, gain a large amount of bonus attack speed and 15% bonus movement speed for 7 seconds. There is currently no internal cooldown for this, so champions like Kog'Maw can keep it up indefinitely. Even when this item is nerfed to have an internal cooldown, Varus, Twitch, Kog'Maw, and the like are going to be really strong with this item. Wit's End has been reworked to be a primarily on-hit item, granting you attack speed, magic resist, and also 20% tenacity. The on-hit magic damage is here and still scales with your level, so it's not a complete loss losing the AD here. Terminus, a new item, has been added to complement Wit's End and other on-hit builds. This item grants you attack damage and attack speed. The passives here are what make it really strong. Our first passive, Shadow, allows our attacks to deal 30 magic damage on hit. Our next passive, Juxtaposition, allows you to alternate between light and dark 
dark on hit attacks. Light attacks grant you 3 to 5 armor and magic resist that stacks up to 5 times and lasts for 5 seconds. Dark attacks grant 6 armor pen and also magic penetration for 5 seconds as well. Rage Blade has also been reworked and Rage Knife has been fully removed from the game. Now, last but not least, let's go ahead and talk about these support item changes. Everybody now buys the same support item that can upgrade into 5 different items. In order to get it to upgrade, we have to buy a World Atlas, which then turns into Runic Compass, which then turns into Bounty of Worlds. Once Bounty of Worlds is acquired, we can choose our five different paths. Celestial Opposition grants you the passive Blessing of the Mountain. This allows you to become blessed to reduce incoming champion damage by 40% for melees and 25% for ranged champions, lingering for two seconds after taking damage from a champion. When the reduction wears off, unleash a shockwave around you that slows all nearby enemies by 50% for one and a half seconds. This effect refreshes after being out of combat for 15 seconds. Solstice Display is our next upgrade. Slowing or immobilizing an enemy champion grants you and a nearby ally with the lowest amount of health, 120 bonus health, and 90 movement speed for 4 seconds. This is on a 20 second cooldown. Great repositioning tool. Blood Song is our third option. This will give you a Spell Blade that after using an ability your next attack is enhanced with to deal 75 physical damage on hit on a 1.5 second cooldown. If the target is a champion, also apply Exposed Weakness to them, increasing the damage that they take by 12% if you're a melee champion and 8% if you're a ranged champion for 6 seconds. Dream Maker is our fourth option. Passively, Dream Maker makes you gain a blue dream bubble and a purple dream bubble every 8 seconds. Healing and shielding another ally blows both dream bubbles to them and empowers them for 3 seconds. Blue bubbles reduce 140 incoming damage on the next hit, and purple bubbles grant 90 bonus magic damage on the next hit. This item is broken and is 100% going to get reworked. And last but not least, we have Zazax Realm Spike. The passive here is Void Explosion. Dealing ability damage to a champion causes an explosion at their current location that damages the target and all nearby enemies, dealing flat damage as well as 3% of their maximum health as magic damage. This damage is capped at 300 against monsters and is on a 3 second cooldown. Insane mage support item. Shirelia's Locket and Knight's Vow are still in the game. Redemption is still a decent item. There's been a little bit of an adjustment as far as the stats go. They don't grant you so much stats like they did before, but they're going to serve their purposes. And with that, we are going to wrap up our Season 14 itemization changes. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video.